just uh, four, four days in now to the return to work after a long, long nine weeks of shutdown. And it feels fantastic to be back at work, back amongst my friends and colleagues and to be getting ready for the season once more. It is also strange because although we are back at work, although it is, we are once again surrounded by familiar faces, it's still not the full complement because we are returning to work in a, in a cautious, build it up step by step type of way. And so we're not yet at full complement. Although it might feel distant to all the fans of the sport who are hungry for, for that on track action, the first race in Austria feels desperately close to us. So we're utterly paranoid now to use the few weeks we have ahead of us to make sure that the interruption doesn't throw us off our normal balance and poise and that we do get everything back up to the sort of ramming speed that we have at the end of winter testing and prior to the first race of a normal season. So all of our efforts are around ramping that back up, turning all the systems back on and making sure we've blown away all the cobwebs and that we're fighting fit and good to go by the time we hit Austria. We haven't yet done a single race, but actually quite a lot of time has passed since we launched this car. And if you imagine where the launch car was and the car that would have gone to Australia, that was frozen around about Christmas. So there was whole of January, the whole of February, March, all making the car quicker in the wind tunnel and also in the design departments. And so we got quite a lot of ideas about how to make it quicker. And quite a lot of those ideas were already in train, in process through the design office before we were forced to shut down uh, nine weeks ago. So our challenge now is to make sure that that quarter of a year of development can get off the drawing boards and onto the car as swiftly as possible. We hope to have um, a chunk of that for the first race in Austria and the season that follows will of course take as much of the development as fast as we can get it onto the car in turn. Just as here in the factory where we're back at work, but the shadow cast by COVID means that the working practices are now different and the social distancing and the mask wearing and the hand washing are all very much in evidence in the factory. So too at the track, but the track itself, a very particular, unusual working environment means that there's an awful lot of considerations that we as a team and indeed the whole industry have had to bring to bear to try to make it so that we can race uh, in this new and I hope not long lasting world of, uh, of dealing with COVID-19. And by the time this is released and you're watching it, we will have conducted a test uh, at Silverstone using a 2018 car, something which the rules uh, generously permit, with both our race crews, both car crews from both companies, HPP and also MGP here at uh, Brackley, and both race drivers where the purpose of our test will be to try out away from the pressure of a race weekend, to try out all of the new procedures that we intend to deploy in Austria, all the procedures with social distancing, with face masks, with PPE, with everything that COVID implies for us as a race team. We will have found out where all the pinch points are and we will have a chance then to, to put them right ahead of when it really counts at the first race of the year. That will be uh, for, the, for the mechanics and the engineers a big change, but probably the biggest change by far for all of us is going to be being at a race weekend where there are no fans. That's gonna be a very, very strange experience. It's, it's normally one of the pleasures of being at a track. Uh, so no fans, a paddock that's gonna be very quiet compared with normal, but necessary sacrifices in order for us to get back racing, to put the product out there on the TV and to, to do what we love to do, which is to, to have a good old fight with the other teams and figure out who's best at it. One of the things that's a little hard to anticipate is exactly how all of us, team and drivers, exactly how we will respond to this big break in, uh, in the rhythm of our normal professional lives. I can speak for myself, I'm itching for the team to get back out on the track and to find out in the crucible of a race event whether the work we did 
uh, has produced a car that we can all be excited and proud of. I just can't wait for that. In terms of feeling ready for it physically, nine weeks off work, just sort of kicking around in my garden and seeing the sun for the first time in many, many months has left me feeling quite healthy and full of beans. And I think that will be true uh, right across the team and for the drivers too, who will have had little to do except work on their physical condition. I suspect mentally it's tougher for the drivers than for the team, this period of waiting, because for the drivers, all of the peaks of emotion are amplified. The highs are higher and the lows are lower. And to get yourself all ready to go at the start of a season and then have it taken away from you the way that it was uh, back in Melbourne, that's tough, I think, for the drivers to take, but it will be a sign of their resilience and their competitiveness to see them bristle back to work full of the vim and vigor that is necessary to be right on it from the start. And I've little doubt that both Lewis and Valtteri will be ready to go when it, when it matters in Austria.